Vox Machina made their way underneath the castle Whitestone, where the Lord uh, and Lady Briarwood currently reside, uh, seeking some sort of a project called the Ziggurat they've been working on for a while. Start heading our, let's start making our way down there, and we'll... I, well, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but we'll have Vax scout ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't do anything. Don't do I love, I love the laughter. Anything. Look. Don't Va- touch. Vax. Vax. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead through the hole. Should I stealth with you? Sure, you're very good at that now because of my gift to you. Hey. <laughs> hey, there you go. You guys are both going to stealth ahead? Yes. yes. To win, side by side. All right, go ahead and roll stealth, stealth checks. As soon as you <laughs> enter the cavern and begin stepping forward into the tunnel, um, there's a flash of light right before flash you. Flash of light right before you. Blind second here, you instinctively step back and pull your daggers out. Uh, before you realize the flash is now a glowing symbol on your hand. The uh, the crest of Serenray that's been stitched into your glove is now pulsing with an energy. Hi, Pike. And you hear for a second, Hi. all out. Pike's voice ring through the darkness. And you see before you, like, out of the out of the shadow, out of the the, the blackness that is before you in the in the cavern, uh, a small gnomish hand reach out for you. The glow from the glove begins to spread from your hand across their hand, and all of you guys see materializing out of the darkness uh, Pike's form just slowly unravel into this this uh, this shadowed area, into this glowing beacon of her holy form that you previously traveled with, as Pike is now once again brought to this point of clarity here beneath the castle white stone. <laughs> I run over and I knock Vax out of the way and I pick up Pike and give her a big hug. My nut! <laughs> oh, Pike, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Grog, but you don't look like Grog. <laughs> what a e- yeah. no, it's it's me. Are you are you is everybody Percy and Cassandra? Yes. yes. Yeah. Except for you, Johnny. It's very weird. You're you you're a tiny gnome, uh, in armor, and everyone else looks like Percy and a woman you've never seen before Bear in your Percy life. Percy is especially disturbing. Bear Percy. Yeah. <laughs> this giant <laughs> Rotund Percy on his hands and, and legs. Don't. <laughs> 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 Give the internet ideas. Uh, please don't. I, I run over and I say, Pike, Pike, what what happened? You disappeared before, but now you're back. What, are are you here to stay? What what's going on? I I'm here to stay for as long as I can. It's it's very hard to stay in this form, especially when this place is is very very dark. And sometimes I, I I just get pulled away. So I'm gonna stay as long as I can. You guys continue on this slowly descending tunnel for about uh, 10 minutes or so before you see it divide to the left very heavily and then continue forward. Can I look at the footprints? <laughs> can, make a survival check. Uh, the fresher footprints which have been I mean, as fresh as of four hours, uh, continue on down that way. Um, you do notice that the smell of the air itself is, you notice as well, as kind of as you're expecting. The air down here has a very kind of acrid, sharp scent anyway, like a hint of chemical. Uh, it seems to be getting stronger to the left. That's where the acid pits are. Acid, briar woods. Briar woods? Yeah. Skip it. About five minutes of this, it evens out, though. Hmm. And as it does, you come to a uh, metallic doorway. Oh, I, I don't push it that far. We're only like four or five inches to peer through. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, that same kind of you know acrid smell that's permeated the hallway continues into this room. It's a little colder. The temperature it's in this room is, is because, uh, as you notice, looking in from what little bit of distance you can see, uh, in this pitch black uh, vicinity, the entire room is made of this type of Ooh. hammered bronze. Oh, boy. What does that mean? Not good. There- I pull the door a little bit shut behind me and turn to the group and say, This is a room made entirely of metal that presumably did not exist five years ago. I think this is probably bad. 
From the doorway, it's a slight ramp that leads down into an open floor area, uh, also of the bronze metal, and then across the way, another ramp that rises up to meet a small kind of upper platform area, and there appears to be a door on the opposite side. Um, Cassandra does say, she goes, this is as far as I've gone down here. Um, Do you know what's on the other side? I assume the, the project. Last time I came here, I was following the Brywoods at a distance. They went in there with a handful of guards, and when I made it to this door, it was empty on the inside. I assume they traveled through that far door, but I have not actually been here myself. It was at that point that I was discovered and dragged back to the castle, so. Uh, I'm glancing about. You don't notice any traps. Uh, you do notice in the center of the room, the very, very center of the room on the floor, there is a small uh, variation in, in the color. You see what looks like a, a, a small, almost oval type smooth button or some sort of a strange uh, object that is embedded in the floor. Uh, so, the, you know, the, as the floor ramps down towards the center, you kind of follow it along the wall, uh, making your way across, kind of looking. You notice as you go across the wall, there are three more of these same opal stones embedded in the wall about shoulder height. In the wall. In the wall as you go across. Uh, there's a big heavy thing. Yeah. And you're the best you are at what you do. So do you think you could shimmy along on your tummy oh. along the side wall? Don't stand up because I, there's uh, gems in the walls along the way and I don't know what they do. So stay low, please. And come meet me up here. <coughs> I just kind of want to walk across the room. Do it. I just walk across. Okay, so you watch in horror as Grog just strolls full, <laughs> full upright back, hammer in his arm with a big grin on his face, uh, looking like a really burly Percy. Um, which I have to keep reminding myself. It's a very curious visual every time. I adjust my amazing spectacles. Passes right through the center of where these opals are aligned across from each other. Seeming no effect. Walking up to the door, does it look like I can get any purchase with my little finger bits? Nope. It is flush a, with the ground. I have a pickaxe that I picked up before we left. Okay. Can I swing it at the bottom and try and find some purchase under the door with you the pickaxe? You could try. Yeah, go I'd ahead. I'd like to try that. Go ahead. You feel the pickaxe move further than it before, and for a split second your brain's like, great! And you look down and notice that the actual handle of the pickaxe has shattered from the impact, broken in two. We're not thinking about this clearly. <laughs> thinking? We've been beaten by doors before, but God damn it, we're not going to be beaten today. I go to the center of the room, and I, I find that little button thing. This is completely unlike any other trap. I'm, I'm going to press it. Good. Okay. Stand on it, in fact. You go and and press your thumb down on it. It doesn't move. It doesn't shift. It doesn't move it at does, all. It doesn't give away at all. It just stays in place. Take it. As Blind. you pull your thumb away, though, you notice that the gem has a very soft, faint white glow to it. And if a second after you pull your thumb away, it fades back. I walk over to the wall and touch one of the other. I touch gems. another one. I touch another one. You guys all place your hands against the opals on the sides and checking uh, as you pull your hand away, the opals kind of glow brightly white again and then fade. Pike. Side. <laughs> Who's got the middle one? Who sticks in the middle one? I'm in the middle. I got one. Trinket. I got one. Yeah, can Trinket touch a stone? Trinket or in the Cassandra. Middle. Cassandra, make yourself useful for Christ's sakes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have seven with Pike. Yeah, we have seven. Nomolia, where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> Pike, uh, you know, Pike, uh, Pike, you put your hand on the final stone. A moment passes. This is totally going to work. Come on, guys. Doesn't seem to have an immediate effect. Uh, wait, wait. No, maybe uh, if we all think is, about the strength of our friendship and bond together. Is there uh, any on the ceiling? No. Nothing on the ceiling. Do we see any missing ones? Anything? Roll a perception check. It's made of copper, right? A what? Uh, These gems are opal. This is like uh, 21. 21. Again. Okay. Looking about, um, Cassandra actually kind of goes up towards the the far ramping. Seems to notice something. Walks up to where the door is and looking at the foot of the door, she kind of moves her hand out of the way and puts her hand down on a hidden eighth opal. Ooh. Nice. Oh. At which point there's a shift, a sound of stone shifting loudly. And those bars across the ceiling, the green bars, <laughs> let loose a bit of dust, and two large walls of green glass <laughs> slam downward oh. to God the damn it. front and back of you. 
locking Shit. all seven of you into the center of this bronze room. Uh, Where's Cassandra? Maybe it's a Cassandra's on the other side of the maybe it's green a It's not, I think I know what it is. What is it? What do you mean you think room. you know what it is? Shh. I'm, we've got to get Can we out of hear here each right other through the glass? We're all uh, on the, we're all, in the we're You can the actually, Cassandra runs up to the glass and kind of puts her hands to it, and you can hear a voice saying, is everyone all right? Grog, can you hit it? Yep. Anybody have any objections? No. no. Okay, I swing away. Okay, you you strike with all your might across the front of the glass, Cassandra kind of steps back as the, as the, the might of it hits. Um, a streak of green sparks fly off the edge of the blade as it careens across the front of this um, leaving bare but a scratch across the stone. Okay. Um, at this point, you guys see the door opening behind Cassandra and two figures step oh, behind her. God damn it! I'm gonna my staff crack it down. I hold my ears. Okay. Pass it underwear. <laughs> see if I can shatter this glass. With a loud sound blast <laughs> echoing through the room, uh, you can hear the reverberation of the actual bronze material. Uh, sending back the vibrations oh. of the blast of the spell, and it, 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 all of you who weren't covering your ears very hardly, it still creeps through and it kind of rings your head a little bit. Right. Um, as the blast hits the glass, it seems to have no effect. Like the actual essence of the spell itself is scattered across its surface. Okay. And you see before you Lord and Lady Briarwood stepping up to the wall, looking through their warped visage through the glass, looking down into the chamber that you're all currently locked in. Oh, is this? Is this your is this your room? I didn't even realize we were in your house right now. How good to see you again, darling. Silas just leans forward and kind of puts his hand over the glass and says, <laughs> and hello to you too. Mm. And welcome to all of you. Well, my dear, at which point uh, Delilah kind of steps forward too and goes, I was hoping for a more formal reunion, but you insisted on riling up the populace in tying up the bulk of our forces. Rather unfortunate, really. Silas. Mm -hmm. Now the door's open behind them, right? Mm -hmm. If I use perception, do I see anything behind them? Anything, any kind of switch or lever or anything? Do you want to make a perception check? 20. 20? Yeah. Uh, looking across the way, but barely able to peer past them with very little light and the distortion of the glass, um, you can see what seems to be some sort of a uh, uh, a smooth stone kind of placard that's embedded in the wall just on the other side of the door. Just outside the door? Yeah. Then, I yes. pull the cur uh, cape around me, and I dimension door. <gasps> what? Oh, outside that shit. door right by the placard and jam my hand on that. Okay. As you push it in, there's a sound of grinding stone again. Uh, however, it the walls stay in place. There are uh, two of the bronze, the highest bronze plates that are pressed against the wall shift inside and move out of the way. God damn it. And two big tubes God damn push it. outward. Um, Silas looks over his shoulder and says, well, I was not expecting you to want to see your friends dissolved quite so quickly, but fucking certainly. Fucking fuck, fuck. Um, oh my god, we're gonna die. As you guys <laughs> look up, this green I stop, viscous liquid begins to pour. I pull out gun and I, like the second those hit, I've seen this coming, because I fucking copper room, fucking acid. Um, I shot to the one tube, do my best to reload as quickly as I can an ice shot to the other. I'm going to try and clog them with ice, at least temporarily. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, as the bullet strikes the bottom of it, it bends it upward, kind of closing off part of its passageway and locking off the other half with ice, seemingly holding it for the time being. Um, while you're reloading, while you're reloading, um, I need you to go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. I have advantage. You do. And because we're in your time at least. And the feast what does about these jewels. Should we work? The feast with these just jewels? gives you advantage. Try it. Uh, Try it. The feast gives me advantage. Well, so but it doesn't stack, right? No. So, so I rolled a sixteen. I mean, you rolled a sixteen. Uh, All right. It was a good thought. Uh, as you pull your hand out of the switch, uh, Silas's gaze pierces into your eyes, and your blades, before you even have a moment notice, have already sheathed themselves and you step into the room alongside the two of them. 
Um, the jewels. It was what lowered the glass. Break the jewels. Uh, Silas comes and pats you on the shoulder and goes, however, it doesn't hurt to have friends. Um, thankfully, we were ahead of our residuum production schedule and uh, well, a few minor modifications to our distillery room made an excellent trap for you. Uh, Delilah turns to him and says, a bit unceremonious, but I'm not in the mood to break a sweat today. We're uh, still weeks off from being ready and I have much work to do. At which point they both kind of look over and put their hands on Cassandra, and Cassandra's still standing there, kind of staring at the room with a look of coldness mixed with this brimming sense of desperation and worry. There's like this crux moment in her where she's, there's this inner conflict within her right now. Liquid begins to pour in now. One side is currently held, the other half just <laughs> spills and begins just cascading I into the my room. my potion of flying that I took from Ripley. Okay, you chug a potion of, he of flying and you begin lifting off the ground. Uh, the rest of you, you do have these two ramps that push up at least uh, about five feet towards where these uh, glass walls are. Um, but the bottom of this entire room is beginning to fill with this liquid. Are you guys all currently at the at the top of the, the ramps? Backing up to where we're not in the middle of the acid. Is what I'm asking, yeah. Yes. yeah. Trinket's kind of backed up awkwardly against the back and so, mm, mm, looking really uncomfortable. Um, Cassandra puts her hand up to the wall in a second and kind of looks at, at the group of you. Which one is my Percy? I walk up, I look at her, and I smile. Like, it's all right. I'll see you soon. She kind of leans forward with her hand up to the wall and looks look at you in the eyes, and you can see there's like, tears running down her face, and she says, your sister left us the day those arrows found my chest. I should not die from those wounds, but to watch you leave me there in the snow. I have a new family. I am Briarwood. And I have a destiny with the Whispered One. She steps back as the two Rywoods put their arms around your sister. And even still, there's like a shake to her voice, and you can see in her eyes there's there's a quake. She speaks words of conviction, but you know deep inside, even there's conflict. At which point, uh, Delilah kind of kisses her on the head and says, don't worry, my dear, it'll be over soon. And they turn around, and step into the hallway they entered from. The acid, which now is about a foot and a half, two feet high, and is slowly oh rising God. in the room. I step into the acid. <gasps> okay. And I start hitting the, the one in the center. Okay. Fine, but While we have to do it now. they take out the gems, these earrings work telepathically, right? No, no you, just, talk, you actually you like talk, talk into it and it happens. Okay, I'm gonna kind of back into the corridor while you guys handle the gems and start talking to Vax. Vax. It's Kiki. Don't forget who you are. You are stronger than this. You are stronger than them. You are not a Briarwood, you are Vox Machina. And we can't lose you. I can't lose you. <gasps> the door is now closed, by the way, and uh, Vax is nowhere inside, neither the Briarwood. The door closed under. again? The gas is now lifted and filled up to the point where it's where the next round, everyone's going to start Do your thing. Speak, being submerged. I take Pike by Pike. the hands, and, a, and, I, and I will dimension door out through the glass to where she put her hand on the hidden gem, okay. is that right? All right, so you, you, you walk, walk up the ramp, you, <laughs> you grab Pike, and the two of you <laughs> appear on the other side of the glass uh, door, up on the platform where Cassandra uh, press the final. Pike, now's a good time to talk about us, don't you think? <laughs> or should we just, no, we'll just put, I'll just put my hand on the, on the, the gem. Okay. Fuck! I pull out my sword and just start whacking. Hey, fuck you, gem! Uh, make a stone wall to break see the what, gem. So what's over there. Break, 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 break your gem. Break my gem? The outside gem. Break the outside gem. Pressing you hear work. Percy yelling from the other break side. Break the it? outside gem! <laughs> All I hear is, <laughs> I just want to break the outside gem! 
think <laughs> Percy, <laughs> I think Percy wants us to kiss Spike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you said the power of love will inspire him. You can fuck the power of love. I will have to turn the acid off. Total of twenty. A uh, total twenty damage. Yeah. Yeah. The gem on the ground before you. <laughs> Shatters uh, with a blast of, of radiant energy. And does the stone door behind us open? Mm. No, you still have one more gem left. This one you were touching. Oh, we have another gem. Hit it. Oh, the one I was touching. Ah. Um. Points of damage. <laughs> the last gem shatters from the blast of the gun. Uh, and? Uh, pieces of the opal kind of scatter across your face. Feel like you, you know, nothing, not enough to really hurt Sorry. you, but it does catch Fine. you. Um, at which point, the um, the green stone wall behind you. <laughs> Lifts up. <gasps> Second, the fluid begins to stop spewing forth. The rest of it begins to just kind of glide out and eventually come to a stop as the acid stops pouring into the room. Um, the um, the door that you swam under lifts up. Um, yes. Great. Scanlan, what do you see on the other side of where you are? I see stone, acid, a very handsome gnome. Oh wait, that's me. I use the earring and I go vax. Vax, please, the acid is filling the room. We're all dying, I don't know what to do. As you're walking alongside the Briarwoods into a new chamber, you hear the words hit your ear and you can feel the back of your throat choking up as a part of you is urging you to run back. And as you kind of stop instinctively in your step, uh, the rest of the group walks ahead about 10 feet before Silas looks over his shoulder and says, Keep up, please. There's work to be done. At which point you feel yourself just continue stepping forward and catching up to him because you wouldn't want to make Perfect. Silas angry. Yeah, I was just... As you all kind of take a moment to regather yourselves after the circumstance, you climb your way through this <coughs> acid-scarred portion of the, the hallway ahead of you, this like, small tunnel. Um, you get up to the other side. Uh, as you're on your way there, Percy, you notice a flash of purple and black energy kind of uh, curse up the front of your pepper box. You glance down at the six o'clock previously empty barrel, and a new name now is emblazoned across <gasps> it. It says Cassandra de Rolo. Oh my oh, shit. god. Does any did, of us did see it, this yeah, besides did we see him? It, or was it you just, guys all you come up this? to the top, and you, you look down, and you see Percy still down, kind of looking at his gun in a, a wide eyed, spacey expression on his face. Percival? You all right? No. Is it your sister? We'll see what this means. Oh, Percy. Let's go take care of this. Yeah, let's. Oh, she always have a choice. We'll see. 